it's Annie and I am here with my ninth sapphic reading vlog which is very very exciting. Um, I have some really good books that I'm choosing to read for this vlog so here we go. First we have The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri which I've been wanting to read for so so long. I'm really excited. This is an Indian inspired fantasy about um, a princess and like a maidservant. It sounds really interesting. I really don't know much about it except that it is part of the sapphic trifecta from last year. <laughs> so it's a very popular book. So I'm hoping that that is with good reason. And then I'm going to read The Verifiers by Jane Peck, which I got from Book of the Month. And I only got it because it was sapphic. I had never heard of it before. And it is described as a literary mystery about this Chinese American girl named Claudia who is kind of grappling with her identity and her family issues while also working at this place that takes clients who are trying to determine whether the people they met on dating apps are telling the truth. And then something weird happens with one of her clients and the story goes from there. So it is a mystery. Um, not a romance and it's literary so not usually what I go for but we will see <laughs> and then I'm going to read one of my neck alley arcs which is Dauntless and I am so excited to read this because it's one of my most anticipated books of this year I am super excited for it it is a Filipino inspired fantasy and it's been compared to the Hunger Games in terms of vibes I am super excited about it um, the cover is amazing. I just love the cover. That's kind of what attracted me to it at first um, But it sounds really amazing. It follows this girl named Sari and her world is divided um, Very clearly there are the people who fight beasts and the beasts themselves and She thinks she's on the right side But maybe she's not when she meets this girl named Sana who can actually talk to the beasts so we will read this and <laughs> see what's up. Um, it comes out in July, so it's a little early to be reading it, but I just can't wait any longer. So you'll get to hear about it here. <laughs> All right, so let's go. I'll take you with me while I read these books. Hello, so I'm 30% of the way through The Verifiers by Jane Peck. I know it's a bit early. I usually do 50%, but I just, figured, you know, I'm here and I'll do an update. Uh, I've been listening to the audiobook for a little bit and I like it so far. Um, the mystery is really compelling. Uh, the story is that the main character named Claudia works at this organization that basically people pay to verify their dating profile, like on Tinder or something. They pay them to check out the people that they're dating to make sure that they're telling the truth. Um, which is interesting. Um, the mystery itself is really interesting. Um, I still haven't gotten very far, obviously I'm only 30% through. Claudia herself as a main character, I don't love her, but she's quite well written and she feels like a real person. Like she's quite multifaceted, has some issues with her own family that are really well interspersed with her um, kind of job, finding out the truth behind all these dating profiles so I am liking it so far and I'll be back to update you when I finish. But for now I'm at the garden center and I'm going to buy some flowers for Mother's Day so I'll take you with me.
So I finished The Verifiers by Jane Peck, and I am giving it four stars. I thought it was pretty good. Like I said, my feelings for the main character didn't really change. Um, she was not my favorite person, um, but she was interesting, and the mystery itself was pretty interesting to me. There were a lot of times where I was guessing like what was supposed to happen and I was totally wrong. Um, there was a lot of like red herrings and like things to mislead you. So I thought that was done really successfully. Um, I will say, first of all, this is not a standalone. Um, it's very obviously set up for a sequel. Um, so that's interesting. I probably won't read the sequel, but you know, it was good for what it was. Um, I will say that the writing style itself, I think is probably one of the reasons why this has kind of low ratings on Goodreads. Um, it does say, it describes itself as a literary mystery and it definitely takes that seriously. Like it is literary fiction. Um, the writing style is very, I would say, even overly descriptive at times. Like, there were times when they're describing New York City for, like, the 13th time, and I was sitting there like, okay, like, I get it. She lives in New York. She bikes around New York, and that's, like, a big part of her personality. Like, we get it. We don't need the description every time. <laughs> and there's a lot of things like that. Um, the humor... I thought it was fine, it might have been a little overdone, and the one thing that kind of irked me was that the main character references these Chinese mystery novels almost every other page, and it really took me out of the story. I think it was nice that that's part of her personality, that she's like a big mystery buff, and that like kind of informs her decisions, but we didn't need quite so many of those references because I think it really kind of took us out of the story a little bit. But besides those sm small things, I thought that this was a pretty successful book. Um, if you're a mystery person, I think you should definitely check this out. And yeah, so first I want to show you, I got uh, this book, Under Fortunate Stars by Ren Hutchings from the publisher I got an ARC uh, because I am interviewing Ren Hutchings on my channel May 21st. So definitely check that out. I am so excited when this came in the mail today. I'm very excited to read it. This book itself comes out May 10th. So definitely look forward to that. And now I am going to be starting The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. So let's go. I'm here with my 50% update for the Jasmine Throne, and I am liking it so far. It is quite slow, which I guess makes sense because it's like 500 pages. Um, it is quite slow, and there are a lot more point of view characters than I thought there would be. Um, and I have to admit, I'm not that into like the side characters. There are three characters that I really like. The two main ones, Priya and <sighs> Malini, I don't actually really like it that much, but at least she's interesting, you know? And then there is Priya's sister named Umika, who I do really like her point of view chapters, but everyone else I feel like maybe could have been done in a different way. <laughs> I don't know because there's so many that it gets a little bit confusing. But anyway, I do like it. Um, the world building is fantastic. 
and I really love like the atmosphere that Tasha Suri has built. It's very dark and like damp like a forest and I love that because that is definitely the vibe of the cover. Um, I am looking forward to seeing how Priya and Malini's relationship develops um, because Priya is like a maidservant and Malini is a princess. Um, like I said, I don't really like Malini, but she's an interesting character. So I'll be back with an update once I finish. Hello! So I have finished The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I really, really like this. I'm going to say right off the bat, it's about a 4 or a 4.5 for me. I am going to continue with the series and read the sequel, which is called The Oleander Sword, which the cover is so gorgeous and Malani's on the cover and it's green and it's beautiful. <laughs> I am really, really excited for it. What I liked about this book, um, there was a ton of politics very very much full of political intrigue it could get a little bogged down by it at some points and like i said i did find the point of views that weren't from priya or Malini's standpoints a little boring maybe i would say but it was definitely super interesting and it left off at a really good place i think the climax really was very well done but it left enough that you like really want to read the sequel like right now <laughs> but i won't do that i'll save that for another sapphic reading vlog um so yeah i really really enjoyed this um not as much as i was hoping i was hoping this was going to be a five star but we can't always have what we want <laughs> and i'm just glad that it was still really good and enjoyable like i said i really like priya um there was a really interesting I don't want to call it a magic system, but like just really mystical world building, um, very interesting stuff with the temple children in here and the twice born and thrice born, super interesting stuff with the deathless waters. Um, I think Tasha Suri is a great world builder. It was the only fault in it was that it was a little too long and a little bogged down with details. The writing style wasn't my style, but it was still beautiful. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I'm really glad that I read it for this vlog and I highly recommend it to everyone. <laughs> so this is the second book of the Sapphire Trifecta I read. I've read this, I've read She Who Became the Sun, and I do have The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, but I have not read it yet. So I'm hoping to read that pretty soon. Um, but next, I am going to read Dauntless, um, which I'm reading for the Asian Readathon. Well, I'm reading all of these for the Asian Readathon, but this is a Filipino inspired YA fantasy. So let's go. Hello. So I'm here with 50% update on Dauntless. I am really loving it so far. Um, I think it's super fun. I have been super busy <laughs> lately, but it is just really, really fun. I think the world building is phenomenal. It really just drops you in there, and I really like the characters. Um, we have Sari, the main character, who is like, she has this kind of mysterious past, and you don't really know her past until about the 50% mark, so I just learned about it. Um, this is a good uh, amount of mystery that kind of keeps you hooked on the story. And then she meets this mysterious girl named Tsana, and I am loving them. I love it. I can't wait to see how their relationship develops and where it goes from here. Um, I really like the whole beast versus these valors, I think they're called, or valiants, um, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm totally scatterbrained, but I, I really love it. I love the idea that the valiants armor that they make out of the beast skin kind of changes color and even shape depending on the valiant's own personality. Like, I think that's that's really a cool bit of world building. And I love how the people live in the trees to kind of keep themselves away from the forest floor and away from the beasts. I think that's also really, really neat. So I'm loving this so far. Honestly, right now it's probably looking like it's gonna be a five star, which I am so happy about because it was one of my most anticipated releases. Um, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to finishing this and I'll be back with an update when I do. Hello, so I am 
here with the final update of this vlog. I finished reading Dauntless and I'm on my break at work. I have my toasted vanilla shaken espresso because I really needed it. Um, I just finished Dauntless this morning. I really, really liked it. It was 4.5 stars. Um, it was just really, really fun just really super enjoyable like it was definitely a YA story but it was really fun and like the characters were really fun and well developed I cared about all of them like I said Sari and Sana's relationship was really good um, I would have loved a little bit more development between them but like it's still like that didn't take away from my enjoyment really um, I really liked how Sari kind of became more sure of herself and the ending that they gave, I really liked it. Um, so I definitely recommend this if you're looking for like really unique YA fantasy. It's definitely different from anything I've ever read before. So I definitely highly recommend it and I'm really, really glad that I read it and that it definitely lived up to my expectations because like I said, it was one of my most anticipated books this year. <laughs> So I'm really excited for that. So I'm really glad I got an arc of it and I could tell you all my thoughts before it comes out. I'm probably going to pre-order it um, just to support the author of a sapphic book, you know? Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend you read it and thank you so much for watching this vlog. I think it's number nine now, which is crazy. Um, and check out my next sapphic reading vlog that's going to be coming out quite soon actually. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!